I'll show you all the uh, devices that you need uh, to build a temperature controller. Um, and these are the Arduino on my board, which is this one here, very small, very nice. Um, you need a suitable uh, LCD controller that goes for Arduino. This is a different one that I'm using, just one I have on hand now. Um, uh, and a, a keypad thing, an analog keypad. Uh, you can use these separately like that, or you can just use a, um, a, an existing keypad and um, screen shield like the 1602. Uh, or you can use this one um, separately and wire them separately. The advantage of using this one is um, you can use the I2C interface, which is this thing here. So if, if that has it, it's less pins to connect to. Um, and you might have more pins left, for, more digital pins left for other stuff. Uh, if you use the, um, the 1602 keypad shield that I've used, it will take most of your digital pins. It will leave you, I think, only three available pins. Yeah, we'll use one of them for the kitchen coil control. So you might get quite limited in that regard. So you might think of using this one instead. And this one is, a, um, this one is a, an analog key. Uh, module for Arduino. It's really nice. It has only one analog input, well, output for this board and input into the Arduino, which will give you the, uh, the value for the keys pressed. Yeah, you, you can see the way it's uh, it's used in, in the code. Uh, but yeah, you can also see tutorials on, on how, to, uh, how to decode analog uh, keypad um, things in Arduino. That's quite simple. So. So here's the solid state relay that I got. This is the SSR 2525, 25 amps. I'll unpack it. So that's the um, the output. You connect uh, the active uh, the active cable here, and this one goes to your coil. You have to connect it um, this one to the ground of Arduino and this one to one of the digital pins. So here's how we connected the screen. The CLS DAVC ground to Arduino One Uno 5V ground. There we go. CLS DAV 5V and ground. So that's connected over here. Testing the Hello World. So this is the assembled um, controller. You can see the Arduino here. Arduino Uno. This is the thermocouple interface MAX 6675. It's connected to 5 volts on the ground on this end. And it's connected to it's connected to pins 10, 8 and 9 on this end, the digi digital pins. The um, the screen is a 20 by 4. It has an I2C interface. And that is very nicely, neatly connected onto this end here, where it says SCL SDA 5 volts ground. That's exactly what it says here. SCL SDA, SCL SDA VCC and ground. So it goes very well connected just exactly into this place. This is a nice, really nice keypad. And so this will be select and this will be left and uh, right and up and, and down. And as you can see, this is an analog one. It has only a ground, VCC, and out. So the ground and VCC, we connected it. We connected over here. So that's 3.3 volts on ground that goes here. And the signal line goes into the A0, so it goes into analog zero. So I've soldered them like as a on the back you could see I've added the soldering here for this 4 and 2 and that's the three data pins over here for the display and that there's one analog pin for uh, for the keyboard. Now that you have all your components set up it's time to connect the thermocouple to them. So um, you would connect the thermocouple not directly but through a, a board that converts the input voltage from the thermocouple to your Arduino board and convert it, converts it to a digital value. For example, like this one, 
This is a Mark 6675 board. It uh, will convert anything up to 1024 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty good for us. Usually it comes up together with um, thermocouple like this. Uh, these are usually rated to 500 or 800 degrees Celsius. Uh, sometimes they will be, be advertised as uh, 1300, which I bought two and burned them at about 900 degrees and they broke. So be careful of that. So that's one of them. It's yeah, safely to say it's 800 degrees, no more than that. Another one is a more robust one, which is this one here. Uh, these are rated to 1300 Celsius. I'll cover the difference between the two and I'll tell you a little bit about what they measure. So let's start with this one. Um, as you can see, it, this is the tip that measures the temperature and this is the end that connects to the board. Uh, it comes already assembled so you just have to stick it into the board um, and stick the board into the Arduino. Um, however, you want to be careful about two things. Um, First of all, uh, I want to say what the thermocouple actually measures. It, contrary to my first understanding, it doesn't measure an absolute temperature. What it does, it measures a difference of the temperature between two junctions. So one junction is the hot junction, uh, and it's the junction of two different metals. The other junction is called a cold junction, and it's also a difference between metals, but at this point it's the difference between the, each metal and the other different metal. So, and it's important because that's what the thermocouple measures, it measures the difference in temperatures between these two points. So with this one, the cold junction is actually here, or here, I'm not sure, it's, it's at the end, and the hot junction is here. So. Now when you connect it to the to the Marx converter, the, the Marx converter has a temperature sensor on the board which allows it to correct the readings from the thermocouple according to the temperature that the board is registering. And this is important because uh, you'll need to make sure that the temperature at the cold junction is the same as the temperature, more or less the same as the temperature that the board is reading. And which is fine with this one. And I've tested it and it works fine. With these guys, uh, this is a more robust one, and the wires that make the thermocouple are quite thick. You can see they're about this thick. And they also make the hot junction over here. However, the cold junction is actually here because this is where the metals make contact with the nickelized uh, guys over here. And this is what your cold junction will be. And if you put this into the kiln, chances are that at the end of this here, it will still warm up a little bit. And the temperature here it will be different than the temperature at this sensor, and you'll get a different reading than, than you're supposed to get. Um, and I'm going to tell you what, what you can do about this. So you can see here where these two different metals meet. You can take the whole thing out and find another maybe just break one of these if you have a broken one it's the same metals and just connect the, the metals to the end here so they'll be the same metal so there will not be a junction here and then your end will be whatever you connected to to the board and that will be the cold junction alternatively i think you could what you could try to do is put it inside here the, the, just the wires directly here and secure them with the bolts I haven't tried that, that might work. So that's your two options to extend the, the cold junction place. Let's go right. So this is this is the way I've connected um, the wires of the thermocouple to extend the cold junction. And that's exactly the two materials, the same two materials, so there's no difference in in metal. So it, it, it would continue along until it comes here and here is the junction to a different metal. So this actually works. Before this was heating up about 30 degrees, this was about 20 degrees and this resulted in a difference of like up to 70 degrees in measurement. 
uh, now it it all works fine. So that's that's an example of of connecting, uh, extending the um, thermocouple coal junction away from your kiln surface. Hopefully this was enough for you to um, get started on, on building your own kiln. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it will be useful.